This video involves a road-killed snake. It was in good condition, so we took the opportunity to learn from this misfortune. Hey, good morning. Uh, I'm Frank of the Ocho Verde Wildlife Channel. We've got a series of videos coming up, and uh, the first one, we are going to take a look at this canebrake rattlesnake. Uh, it was a road kill. We're going to take a look at the outside of it. The, we're going to look at the fangs. We're going to look at the rattle. In part two of the video, we're going to open the rattlesnake up and take a look at what's inside of it. And in part three, we're actually going to skin the rattlesnake and tan the hide. So there's something to look forward to with all that. So when the rattlesnake is skinned and the hide is tanned and it's finished, I'm going to actually give away the skin to one of the viewers. Dead snakes can still harm you. So I'm going to be very careful around the head. The fangs are still intact. The venom gland is still intact. The snake's been dead for 24 hours. It's probably uh, doesn't have any reflexes, but remember a freshly uh, killed rattlesnake, the head can still bite you and envenomate you uh, and cause serious problems. This is called the timber rattlesnake. The scientific name is Crotalus horridus. Crotalus in Latin means uh, rattling noise or, or bell. Horridus, of course, means horrid or awful. So it's literally translated to the horrid or awful rattlesnake. It's got a very toxic venom and some of the characteristics of that venom, besides the hematoxin, which damage blood vessels and tissue, uh, it's also got quite a bit of neurotoxin that can damage the nerves. So you always want to be aware of that when you're dealing with rattlesnakes, uh, dead or alive. Uh, all rattlesnakes in the United States and around the world are venomous, so just please keep that in mind. I grew up calling these uh, timber rattlesnakes canebrake rattlesnakes, uh, generally because of the tan or the pinkish uh, background color and this uh, orange or brown dorsal stripe. Generally, the timber rattlesnakes have more yellow to them. It's also been brought to my attention that uh, the timber rattlesnakes or the canebrake rattlesnakes uh, south of Charleston, South Carolina, actually have a little more neurotoxin in their venom, which makes them just a little bit more dangerous. This one was a roadkill. Uh, I saw it on the side of the highway, and my wife and I went back to get it. And we've kept it in a cooler overnight to make sure it's not going to be problematic with the, any kind of reflexes or stuff like that. But check out uh, how cryptic the coloration is. I'm going to take it over here to uh, an area and we will put it on the ground and see what it looks like. All right, so I have placed this rattlesnake eye in this brush pile right here. It's pretty difficult to see. And you can see just how much the coloration of the snake blends in with, you know, any kind of brown or green background. It's very difficult to see. They call this cryptic coloration. So the timber rattler is the most common rattlesnake in the United States. It ranges from Texas up to the Midwest, over to the Northeast, down to the Southeast. It's in the South as well. Uh, it does not go all the way through Florida. It really stops uh, just a little bit into Florida. Um, take a look at the iNaturalist map of all these uh, reported cases of timber rattlers. You can see how much of the country it does cover. And this is the range in South Carolina. They're quite prevalent um, in the lower part of the state. There's a gap in the middle part, of the, in the upper middle part of the state, and then they're pretty common up in the northern part of the state. Uh, this individual was found actually in the city limits of Charleston. Uh, on Johns Island, which is just uh, over the bridge from James Island, but it's technically in the city limits of Charleston. And I don't know the last time a timber rattler has been found in the city limits of Charleston, probably quite a while. Uh, you can recognize timber rattlesnakes. Uh, they always have this um, dark mark in the eye. Uh, they will always, generally always have a chevron pattern on their body. Uh, the chevron pattern is quite uh, indicative of this species. Sometimes they are very dark though, and you can't see the chevron pattern, but you can see that generally it is a large uh, a rattlesnake, a large venomous snake. Uh, usually they're girthy. They're not fast movers, although they can be very quick. Uh, another thing to notice about these rattlesnakes are the scales. They're uh, heavily keeled, which means they actually have a, a midline down each scale. This species is considered to be heavily keeled because this line is quite uh, obvious when you look at each individual scale. Now, uh, timber rattlesnakes, uh, when they're young, they'll eat lizards uh, and frogs. 
as they grow, they will continue to eat lizards and frogs as well as snakes and start to eat rodents, including squirrels, rats, uh, mice. Uh, sometimes they eat rabbits. Uh, one of their favorite habits is to coil at the base of the tree and wait for a squirrel to come down. And when the squirrel comes down, it gets eaten. I'm sure they eat quite a few squirrels by sitting at the base of the tree. Now, as far as predators go, uh, when they're small, they can be eaten by birds, especially the raptors, owls, hawks, uh, eagles, perhaps ospreys, even uh, the egrets and the herons will eat the baby rattlesnakes. Raccoons, opossums, uh, bobcats, foxes, coyotes, uh, and a lot of times feral pigs will eat the baby rattlesnakes. <laughs> However, when they get to be this size, uh, nothing really feeds on them. Uh, unless it's a roadkill. Um, king snakes can actually eat them up to a certain size, but not this size more than likely. However, most timber rattlesnakes are killed by people or by cars. I've read that timber rattlesnakes are protected in every state in which they occur. So rattlesnakes are members of the pit vipers. Uh, and of course, pit vipers mean that they actually have a pit uh, in between their eye and their nostril. You can see right here where the laser pointer is. That is the uh, heat sensing pit of the snake and that kind of helps them sense heat coming from prey or from predator. So it's important to remember that, that that's how they actually hone in on their prey in order to make an accurate strike. Now, timber rattlers can give birth to uh, up to 15, 16 uh, young babies. They don't lay eggs. The eggs are actually formed uh, inside the body and then it's live birth. Uh, and these young snakes come out into the world completely venomous, ready to go, because they are well equipped with pretty much uh, a full dose of venom from day one. Now this rattlesnake has, um, let's see, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten rattles. I originally thought that this rattlesnake had a button on the rattles and the button is the first segment of the rattle that the snake is actually born with. And sometimes you can tell how many times the snake is shed if a button is present. However, I believe this is what's called a nubbin. And a nubbin indicates that at some point, the rattles have been broken off of this snake. It makes determining the number of sheds and somewhat the number of years the snake has been alive very difficult. And it's basically just dead skin on top of dead skin. Just shaking around like that. They shed in accordance to how much they eat. And they can shed anywhere from three to six times a year. Before we look at the fangs in the mouth here, I kind of looked at them earlier. There's a little bit of blood in the mouth, so I'm gonna wash it out. And we'll take a close up look at the fangs and hopefully they aren't damaged too much. All right. That is the fang right there. Interesting enough, it appears this rattlesnake only has one fang, unless the other one was damaged somehow. See, these fangs are, they usually sit against the roof of the mouth, but when they open their mouth to a certain degree, they completely flare out like that. Look at that fang. So you can see when the snake's mouth is closed, the fang goes away. But if it opens to a certain degree, it comes right back out. This is how snakes bite. Very interesting. All right, one of the things I wanted to do was uh, give me an idea of what happens when a snake bites a balloon. Just like that, it's done. Uh, however, what I wanna do is I wanna see if we can get this snake to penetrate through these rubber boots. Now, I don't wanna break the fang. It's virtually impossible to get this fang through this boot. It takes a lot of work. It's difficult to get the fang into this boot. 
you really have to press it. And I don't think snakes can, are capable of doing that. All right, in the next video, what we're going to do is we are going to flip her upside down and open her up. That is the fang right there.